All right, welcome back in, everybody. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. It's the 21 off season. Today, we're looking at tight ends, wide receivers, and running backs. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us. We're outdoors today. We're on the little board. We might even get a little bit of rain before this video is over, but we'll keep on trucking through it. I've got the wide receiving group right here at the top. I've got the tight ends right here in the middle, and then I've got running backs down here at the bottom, and I've got their names all abbreviated. We'll go through that one by one as we talk through. So right here at the top, Tyreek Hill. I've got him. He's a $16 million cap pit. What more can I say about Tyreek Hill than what has already been said over the past two seasons? The guy is insane. He is fast. He is quick in short area burst. He's got the top end speed. He can catch the football. He runs the routes. I mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You guys already know what you have in Tyreek Hill. He is amazing. He is an A-lister. He is the top end. He is the cream of the crop. <laughs> All right, I'm done talking about him, okay? Well, how much are you paying for his services? $16 million cap hit. It's a little bit of a discount. And I know, you know, when people start talking about how good a player is and, you know, they're priceless and, and, and you just can't put a price on that. Well, you have to put a price on that, of course. So $16 million, you're getting somewhat of a discount right there for how good he is and for how many resources opposing defense, and that's the key, how many resources opposing defenses have to divert over to him to his side of the field or to the deep end of the field in order to not stop him but just slow him down and keep him from dominating the entire game. We'll say the same thing about Travis Kelsey here in just a second. But this is all true of Tyreek Hill. So at $16 million compared to what other good receivers are getting, you're at a little bit of a discount here. You're certainly getting everything you're paying for, and the value is there. And so the Chiefs have done a good job here, uh, not only of bringing Tyreek Hill in off the draft, but of paying him and getting a bit of a discount at a time when it worked out for Kansas City to get a bit of a discount two off seasons ago. After that, I've got five guys here at wide receiver, and after those five guys, it completely drops off. After that, you're talking about guys that are on the practice squad, or guys that barely played at all, or guys that maybe shouldn't be playing at all. So after these top five here, it really drops completely off the table. So I've only got the five guys here at wide receiver. Sammy Watkins is a mixed bag. Let me start off by saying this. I love Sammy. I love his athleticism. I love his talent. I love his attitude. I love his background. I mean, I could say a lot of good things about Sammy Watkins. On the flip side, on the football field, on the production side, he falls into the same category that gets a lot of NFL players, and I mean a ton of them, and that is injuries and inconsistency. I and I. It's the I and I category, and I know that's kind of two blended together. He, the talent is there. He can catch the football. He has the speed. He has the football IQ, he has the work ethic, it's all there, and yet we've never really seen, outside of one season in Buffalo, we've never really seen what Sammy can do for a full season when healthy and consistent and playing his best football. We have never seen that except for I think it was year one or year two in Buffalo. We've certainly never seen that here in Kansas City with the Chiefs. Now, when he's on the football field, he's a threat at all times, and teams have to really pay attention to him. And when he's that third guy, but listen, we just have not seen, and I know some people say, well, you know, they didn't have to get as much out of Sammy because they were getting so much, and they have so many offensive weapons, and that's true. I'm going to make that same exact point about two other players here in a second. But I still think when you look at how athletic Sammy is and how talented he is, and his time in Kansas City, we haven't seen as much out of him as we would like to see. Now, having said that, I love that he was willing to come back this year and play for a bit of a discount. Actually took a pretty severe pay cut in order to come back. It was not just a restructure. It was very rare. It's extremely rare for guys in the NFL to take a pay cut. He did that just to come back this year and play for Kansas City again. So my hat's off to him. I really, 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 really doubt, in spite of what we've heard from certain people in certain places, I really doubt that Sammy is going to be back in Kansas City this year. The budget for them is getting really tight this year. Could they find a way to keep him on the team? Absolutely. But they've already got other decisions to make in other places, on defense, on the offensive line. And those decisions all combined, combined with the fact that they don't necessarily have to have Sammy 
They have other weapons. I would be very surprised if Sammy Watkins is back on the team in 2021. That's not to say they can't do it. They absolutely can do it. That's not to say they won't do it. I can never predict what somebody else is going to think or say or do, but I would be surprised. And personally, if it was me, as much as I love Sammy, as much as I appreciate the discount, the, the pay cut that he took in 2020, as much as I like him in almost every aspect, when I look at the I, &I category and when I look at my overall budget, he's a guy who's not going to be coming back in 2021 if I were the one making the decisions, okay? So we'll, we'll see what Kansas City decides to do there, but that's what I feel like right there with Sammy Watkins. McCole Hardman, I think, is a guy. This is a guy that I said I was going to say, one of the two guys I was going to say this about. McCole Hardman is a guy who I think is ready to take that next step up. He's only going to be making a million dollars, 1.2, something like that next season as a cap hit. I think he's the kind of guy who is ready to step up and be consistent and produce and be kind of that third or fourth weapon. I think he is absolutely ready. He's already shown that at times over the past couple of seasons now. We really like what Mikel Hardman brings to the table. He's got the speed. He's got the work ethic. He, he seems to have everything. He seems to be able to run the routes. It looks like this is a guy who could step up and give more to Kansas City if they needed more, and I think they're going to if Sammy's gone this year. I think McCall Hardman is easily the kind of guy that if Kansas City wanted to spread the ball around more, they could get it to him and get him 50, 60, 70 catches if they needed that. They may not need that much production, but I think he's right now ready and right to, to produce like that on that kind of a level. Really like McCall Hardman there. I think he steps up to the number two spot there just in terms of production, overall production for Kansas City. Byron, Byron Pringle is an exclusive rights free agent. Basically that means if you want to bring him back at a really cheap price, I forget what the number is, 900000 950 something like that. If you want to bring, bring Pringle back this year, you can do that for an incredibly cheap price just like you had him last year. He produces as a wide receiver. He produces on special teams. You can't get a player any cheaper than that. So personally for me, I'd like to have a guy come back in Pringle who we know can play on some level. Maybe he gets 400 snaps this year at the wide receiver spot. Um, is he going to step in and be an 800 snap full-time kind of guy? Probably not. I really wouldn't expect that. Even, even if he did do that, I don't know that you get a lot of production out of him for that. But Pringle is the kind of guy who, for the price, I would love to bring back at wide receiver and on special teams. You're getting a solid deal there, excellent value. And I don't think, you know, if you were to draft a guy in the fifth or sixth round or bring a guy in as an undrafted rookie free agent, you're not going to get the consistency and the production you would get out of Pringle right there at that spot for that price. Okay, so that's what I would do with Pringle. And then here at the bottom with Robinson, he's a free agent. Um, he is a completely unrestricted free agent. I, I, we'll see what Kansas City wants to do with Robinson. Robinson's the kind of guy who can step up and produce. I think he can play more. I don't know if he can necessarily play better, but I think if he played more, you wouldn't be hurt. I think this is a guy who can step up and produce and, and get you maybe the 40 catches that Sammy was getting out of it last year. If, and, and I think Robinson looks like that kind of a guy. Not that he has the athleticism or, or the up-end talent that Watkins has, but I think he can produce the consistent production that you can get. And we've seen that to a certain level here with Robinson over the past over the past year. We saw that, and I think he can produce more. I don't know necessarily that he's ever going to be a top-end kind of a player. What I don't know is how other teams view Robinson. And, and you know, if you can get Robinson back for a million dollars, again, if you're paying a guy more than a million dollars, you're going to have to restructure several deals to make up for that extra that you're getting. But for Robinson, if you get him back at $1 million, $1.5 million, I think Kansas City would probably be wise to do that. If other teams are going to start to throw more money at Robinson, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if they do that because he does look like a solid, consistent receiver down kind of toward the, I don't know, the, the, the mid-level there of wide receivers. If other teams start to throw him more money, four, five, six million dollars at Robinson, then I think Kansas City is out. I think they're going to be long gone, and it wouldn't surprise me for Robinson to make that kind of money. So if I could wrap back up here, Hill's coming back, um, Hardman's coming back. If you want Pringle back for cheap, you can get him. 
Watkins, I think, has probably gone due to price and due to budget considerations for Kansas City. And then Robinson is the big question mark. A, does Kansas City want him back? I would think that they do. But B, is he going to price himself out of Kansas City because other teams are willing to pay him more money than what Kansas City can currently do? That wouldn't surprise me. So those are the five wideouts that I have. After that, it completely drops out. You're talking about practice squad players. So I figure more than likely there's a good chance Watkins is gone. Robinson's 50-50, just like I called Wiley 50-50 for the offensive line. And then they'll probably need to draft somebody here at wide receiver just so that they have at least some kind of a depth here. But your top end talent is still good here with Hill and Hardman. Tight end. I only put one tight end on the board because after that, you really just have nobody in terms of production. It's not that they can't block. It's not that they can't work hard. In, in, in all essence, really, I think you've been lucky here in Kansas City with Travis Kelsey not getting injured. So much of what the Chiefs do has been based on skill and has been based on good decisions and has been based on smart decisions from Andy Reid and Brett Veach and just all the way down. I think that one of the places you've actually been very lucky the past two or three seasons is that Kelsey has not been out with injury during the playoffs or that he has not been out with injury for a long period of time during the regular season. Because in all honesty, you've had absolutely positively nobody behind him here at tight end. Okay, I'm going to read the guys that have been, were on the roster last year. Kaiser, Yelder, Seals-Jones, and Bayless. Okay? There is just no production there after Kelsey. If Kelsey goes down, you have absolutely nobody. Now, Kelsey is an all-world kind of a player. So as long as he's healthy, as long as he's on the field making $13 million, that's a steal. You, you know, you, I, it's, it, it's actually a steal here to be paying Kelsey $13 million as good as he is. He is insanely good. He, he is fast for a tight end. He can make all the catches. He is almost unguardable because of a side speed, size speed combination. I mean, he is just insane. The reason they're only paying him 13 is because he's a tight end. But when you look at his production and the fact that he's completely unguardable, um, you're getting an absolute steal here because wide receivers make more. And so from Kelsey, you're actually getting an insane deal here, $13 million cap hit for 2021. After that, though, it's nothing. If Kelsey goes down, you've got guys who can block, but that's it. They're not going to be able to catch the football. They're not going to be able to make a difference in the offense. They're not going to – and, you know, listen, I'm not saying that you have to have somebody behind Kelsey who's as good as Kelsey because nobody in the league is as good as Kelsey. What I am saying is that you've got to have somebody who – at least can make a few catches if Kelsey were to go down with an injury, and we all hope that doesn't happen, but you have to be prepared for that. And I think Kansas City has been lucky the past two or three seasons that Kelsey hasn't gone down with an injury because if he did, there is nobody behind him at tight end who can produce almost anything at all whatsoever in terms of catching the football and making a difference. Um, there just is nobody. And so if I were Kansas City, and they're not going to be able to spend a lot of money in free agency this year, they may not spend hardly any money in free agency this year, this it's one of the positions I would do that. Tight end two, TE2, backup tight end, whatever name you want to call it. Even if they spend about $5 million on a guy who can come in, the kind of guy who, if he played a whole season, could make 40 catches, just somebody who could bring something at tight end. I think that's a wise investment for Kansas City so that you don't have quite the drop off here. What you can also do with that, say, well, we don't want to waste $5 million or $6 million on a backup player. Kansas City can also switch around to a two tight end formation. The league is ripe for teams who want to switch over to two tight ends. You have so many defenses who have switched over to seven defensive backs, six defensive backs. They're lighter, they're smaller, and a second tight end, even if he's not as good as Travis Kelsey, would give defenses all kinds of matchup problems because even if they have a linebacker who's anywhere near the same size, they don't have anywhere near the coverage skills to try to hang out with another tight end. If you had two tight ends, we saw this work with the Patriots several seasons ago. I think the league is ripe for that. If you want to create matchup problems, you can do that with two tight ends. So it's, that's why I call it tight end two. I don't even like the term backup tight end. I love the idea of having two tight ends there on the field. Not every play. We don't want to totally remake the Kansas City defense, but it would not hurt to reinvent yourself, and I think defenses in the NFL set up for that right now. That two tight end combination, I think it would create quite a few matchup problems for anybody. So I think that's a wise investment, not only because you have 
somebody who can produce something after Kelsey is gone. You also have the ability to create matchup problems for opposing defenses with two tight ends. So we'll see what Kansas City wants to do that. They may not do that at all. They may not even be thinking about anything like that at all. That's something that I would be doing if I were making those kinds of decisions. So wide receiver, lots of top end talent. Your depth is a little questionable. Tight end, all, you know, Kelsey's all world top end talent. You have no depth behind him. You get the running back, everything changes. It is completely the opposite. When you get to running back, you have all kinds of depth. So much depth, in fact, that they're probably going to let a couple of guys go. I'm going to start with Edwards Elaire. Edwards Elaire is the second guy who I think is ready to produce more if Kansas City needs it. Elaire was not a world beater this year. He didn't have to be. He had two or three games where he absolutely broke out and he looked amazing. And you can see the talent there, not only from catching the football, running the football, et cetera, et cetera. Kansas City didn't need him to be great every game this season, and, and so they just didn't give him as many touches as he might could have had, and I think he's a guy who is ready to step up and carry a load. So if you're missing any kind of production from wide receiver at all, I think you can replace it with what you got at running back and just give them more touches, whether it's catching the ball out of the backfield, whether it is just handing them the ball on, on running back plays, up the middle. I think you have guys at running back who can carry more of a load. And Edwards Elayer, he's making, I think, two and a half million dollars. I rounded it to three, but it's two point five million dollars for Edwards Elayer. Cap hit this season. Great deal. This guy, he's still in his rookie contract. I think he is ready to produce a lot more should Kansas City decide to go in that direction. Again, that's reinventing yourself a little bit. That's getting a little bit away from the wide receivers. Um, throw it down the field all the time. You're not going to reinvent yourself too much. You know, we're talking about five per, five to ten percent of the offense switching over to maybe running back or that second tight end, but primarily you're still going to be the Kansas City offense because you still have Hill and you still have Kelsey, and those are still the two guys that scare opposing defenses all the time. Okay, so you're not talking about changing much when I'm talking about reinventing yourselves a little bit here, but five to ten percent of the offense, five percent per five to ten percent of the touches handing them over to the running backs or possibly even a second tight end okay Edwards Elaire excellent player I think we've not seen the best of him I think we're going to see him get better and better over the next couple of seasons Damian Williams is a guy that I really like and and I, I would call him underutilized but again Kansas City just hasn't really needed him and, and I really like this guy he has produced running the football he can catch the football I really, really like Damian Williams. He's got that top-end speed. He's got the toughness. I, I really like him. I think if he were on another football team where they didn't have so many weapons, he'd probably be getting a 1,000 snaps a season, and he'd be getting all kinds of catches and all kinds of yardage racking up, all kinds of all-purpose yards. I, I really, really, really like Damian Williams, and he might be the second-best running back on the football team, okay? So... Uh, he's coming back next season, $2.8 million. I rounded it to three, but he's at $2.8 million. Again, pretty good deal. Uh, you, you've got plenty of weapons here in Kansas City. Even if Sammy goes, even if Robinson goes, it just means you're shifting around a little bit to the running back spot and maybe tight end too. Okay, so Elaire is there. Damon Williams is there. No decisions to make there. They're already coming back. $2.5 million, $2.8 million. The cap pits are good. They're young. They should be healthy, et cetera. Okay. Uh, Daryl Williams, he's a restricted free agent. If you wanted to, you could bring Daryl Williams back for probably a relatively cheap price. I would say $2 million. Again, I don't know what 31 other general managers are going to think and how much money they're going to throw at him, I wouldn't think it would be a whole lot. I would think you could bring Daryl Williams back for one and a half, two million dollars. I don't know that, but that's based on his restricted free agent status. I would think you could get him back for that. I'm not sure that Kansas City is going to do that, and personally, I wouldn't do that. You've got your layer. You've got Damian Williams. I'll get the Thompson in a second. You've got three other guys here, and I just don't think Daryl Williams makes enough of a difference to where when you've already got a pretty full stable of running backs and you've already got a very tight budget, I just don't think it makes sense to give an extra half a million or a million to him versus a fifth or sixth round draft pick or an undrafted rookie free agent that you could bring in and get maybe somewhere close to the same production that what Daryl Williams can put out. So 
personally, I would be surprised to see Daryl Williams coming back, and and I wouldn't bring him back personally just based on what else we had to look at here with Kansas City. Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell came in, contributed last year, but obviously it's not the same Le'Veon Bell from 2018. All right, Bell 2018 was insane. Absolutely one of the best players in football. He's not that anymore. I think Bell can still contribute for somebody. I don't think at all that he'll be back for Kansas City next year. I think somebody will give him two, three, four million dollars to come play for them. Maybe not four, maybe two or three million dollars. We'll see. But I would be very surprised to see Bell come back. Bell really was a guy that they just brought in during the season to add more production to add more depth to add more experience and that's really one of the things that Brett Veach has done the best over the past two seasons he knew he had a good roster he knew he had a Super Bowl roster and he's done an excellent job at bringing in guys like Rimmers like Bell to really just add the depth add the veteran experience and it has really paid off Brett Veach has done an excellent excellent job of that and that's what Le'Veon Bell was brought in for I don't think Bell will be back for Kansas City next year I just don't think they need him Bell will play for some other team next year how much money he gets I don't know but he will contribute and produce Bell is not going to be the thousand snap kind of a guy any longer I don't think he's going to be a three down back in the league any longer but it wouldn't surprise me at all for him to get five or six hundred snaps with some team somewhere and actually be a valuable contributor for them somewhere over the next couple of seasons and that's Le'Veon Bell last guy on the list today is Thompson Thompson you know Thompson's a backup running back but it's nice to have him on the roster you can get him back. I think it's for seven hundred fifty, eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, somewhere in there. Again, it's less than a million, and and this is not a financial decision. He's back on the roster if you want him back. So the question really becomes: Do we want Thompson more than we want an undrafted rookie free agent running back? And they'll probably battle that out in camp. So we'll see what they do. But I figure Thompson is coming back and at least fighting for a roster spot during this next offseason as they go through training camp with whoever else that they decide to bring in at running back, probably as undrafted rookie free agents, okay? So good depth there at running back, lots of good choices. I think you'll see Elayer, Damian Williams, and Thompson all back. I figure Le'Veon Bell is probably completely gone. And then more than likely, I figure Daryl Williams is gone. But again, you never know what Andy Reid, Brett Veach are thinking there. They might decide, hey, for a million and a half, two million dollars, we'll bring him back. But that would surprise me just looking at the depth here that you have at running back. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time. Goodbye.